Everybody, it's Tyler here at The Wave at WPI, checking in with 88, 89A, 99%, absolutely phenomenal performance so far, by the way. Currently ranked number seven in the world in skills, and number one here at WPI as a recorder, so congratulations on that. But also number one in skills at their qualifier, and we're finalists to the event. This is a full rebuild we're going to be talking about on this robot here. Lots of cool stuff to dive into, a full journey, of course, talking about their blocker, their kata, wings, intake, so much more. And some cool stuff in programming, some odometry, more we'll be talking about. Let's learn about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Jeremy, let's start off on this robot, talk about the uh, dual hang threat that you bring, and then uh, also the blockers while you on your robot. So first, we have this um, B-tier hang mechanism. It's right here. It's kind of, I'll lift it right here. We found that B-tier hang was very effective in the uh, local competitions or more recent competitions because most teams right now only still have A-tier hangs, and that is that means we pretty much get the five extra points every game. And in the case that our alliance also has a, a uh, hang on the bar pipe, we just have we have these two extra a, a tier hangs, just in hang just in case we can deploy the um, we use this piston to deploy it. It's actually attached to these two by zip ties. I'll deploy it like that. The piston just pulls back and releases these two, and then we can just drive up onto the pipe and then park on the pole. Now how about your blocker and your robot? Is that something that was added on from your last event? Yeah. So this is our blocker. Um, we found out blocker was extremely helpful as the main source of points in this game was from the match loads. It's with one piston and we found out that it, it worked pretty well. It was able to block a few shots and we were also able to return. Keep the balls on their side, kind of. Uh, one of the things when we talk to a lot of teams here, it's, it's always interesting to see the way the meta of this game is evolved because you see teams like yourselves who have been offensive powerhouses through this, adding blockers and having that versatility to play defense. Um, when you were looking at coming into this game, was that a big priority for you coming here at WPI to have that kind of versatility between the two? Yeah, especially between like the blockers, I mean the two hangs that we have. Um, we have like, we wanted to be able to kind of match with everyone. Yeah and kind of be compatible with everyone so we can do our best at pretty much every match. I love also how just uh, simplistic these are too and I think simple is always a key when you look at stuff like this because that means it's just going to be uh, an easy process for you to go and bring that versatility is so great. Charles, let's uh, hand it over to you and talk about uh, your catapult and your match loads. Uh, talk to me about uh, not just the composition of it, how quick are you doing a match load cycle and what goes into it? Okay, so um, this is our kata. It is roughly about 100 shots per minute. Um, so it's one to five here, the gear ratio, and it's it's a 12 tooth slip gear to a 60 tooth. Um, so here we can have the tri ball. Um, so if you start the ma match loading, okay, you can place it here, and it will um, shoot it with a low arc for aut for skills, because when we realize that the spread of tri balls. Well, like the grouping of tri balls in skills was the bet the closer together, like the closer um, together and near the goal, the better. And in match, we developed this high arc, which goes above most blockers. Um, so that way, we can't get blocked. So at Haunted, we built a catapult that was aiming to shoot into the low goal. Um, it w had about a 20% success rate, but it just used it up so much motors 
two motors, which we realized we could actually use for a six motor drive. You know, that's something that's really interesting when we talk to a lot of teams. I actually don't hear much about the spread during skills as well, too. You hear teams just talking about how quick it is and how fast it is, but I love the thought process that goes into, like, saying, hey, we want that grouping to be so we can just push right in, and that works out. It, would you say that's probably, like, your number one attributor to your skills being so high? That is definitely that is definitely the case. Our, yeah, um, it just makes it so we can score as many points as possible, and as few pushes as possible. Another thing with match loading is the zip tie. So if I have the tribal real quick, when I push it back, it automatically like realigns into the middle in skills, which means we have a very consistent like match loading process um, for the highest score possible. Jason, let's keep moving on and talk about the uh, wings uh, and your robot. Uh, anything that really stands out that you want to let the VRC community know about? Yeah, sh sure. Um, so, you know, our wings, they're fairly standard. You know, have two pistons powering it on each side. But what's what's, in, what's interesting about them is only one side of these have, like, wedges. Usually you see teams with, like, two wedges on both wings. But this, this is specifically for skills and match autos. So this wing is for match autos. So if we're on the close side of an autonomous during a match, we can push balls over with the wedge. But this wing, because it doesn't have a wedge, we can be able to like swing turn to do turns and skills that goes like over the pipe with the wings out that can like sweep tri balls like um, closer to the goal and that allows us to get a higher skill score. And if you see with the wings, um, these have like these uh, plastic hinge like um, joints right here, and this just allows us the wings to be more like flush against the the drivetrain, so it's just um, it's just easier and like smoother to drive across everything. Uh, yeah, and it just and the wedges really help with uh, with uh, Auton and just driving in general during a match. So, yeah. Athena, one of the things I think is really underrated on robots is uh, having super wide intakes for that, just that control that you can bring to it. And watching on the field, it just seems like you're just so easily able to bring in tri balls onto it. So, talk to me about uh, not only what, of course, your intake is, but some of the strategy behind it for your team. Why it's so important for you. Yeah, so for the intake right now, we have a five flex wheel, um, 600 RPM intake. And so if we have a tri-ball here, we can intake it. Um, and actually, the tri-ball rests on this standoff with a non-slip mat on it. Um, and that is how we can hold the intake, well, hold the tri-ball while we are pushing it into the goal. And um, we can actually release it like this as it comes over the bar. And we have these standoffs in here to help prevent it from going on to the brain. I don't see a piece of polycarb on the end here. Does that help with centering the tri balls in at all? Yes, that does help. Um, so if a tri ball comes around to this side, when we just move forward, it can automatically um, go towards the center here. So it's really actually almost adding even more width to your intake as well too, which I think is really valuable uh, for this. Let's start to wrap up this robot. Peter, talk to me about the uh, sensors and coding uh, that's gone into this. Uh, you know, when you look at top tier robots, there's always gotta be a great part of programming uh, that makes something like this happen. Uh, we talked earlier, you have some odometry and some other cool things that you wanna cover as well. All right. Um, so, um, I think there are two key parts on this robot that really contribute to the success of our programming. Um, the first one I want to talk about are the distance sensors on our robot. So, as you can see, we have one distance sensor here, prominently placed. Uh, we also have one mirrored on the other side, um, we, and we have one in the front and uh, one in the back as well. So, these, um, so, combined, these four distance sensors cover all four axes, and then that allows us, um, allows a robot to sort of measure the distance to the adjacent walls and that allows us to um, reset the robust position in the middle of, a, like, let's say, a skills autonomous run. And so that corrects for um, any sensor drift that adds up during, uh, in, an, uh, in an odometry program. Um, additionally, we also have um, this tr horizontal traction wheel on the back. So one thing with our drivetrain is that the traction wheels in the middle of our drivetrain are actually a bit smaller in diameter than the Omni wheels. And the, their main purpose is to sort of um, prevent drift while crossing the barrier. So when we're on the field, we can, be, we can move sideways quite a bit. And so this horizontal tracking wheel allows us to detect any sideways drift that occurs during autonomous. And then we also have it connected to a piston um, so that it can retract during drivers. So we can still, we still have the ability to cross the barrier and have a lot more flexibility um, in where in the field we can go. But this does drop down for autonomous. Well, 99% looking absolutely phenomenal here at the Wave at WPI. So we can't wait to see, of course, how your robot performs here. But good luck the rest of the season. Thanks a lot for taking time to show off your robot. you got a phenomenal machine. Appreciate it. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following.
The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.